Have you ever had an experience where you learned something new about being a parent or in regards to your profession that changed the way you viewed yourself, your community, your kids, and the way that you go about your everyday life? I'm not meaning to exaggerate how I feel about this next conversation, but when I first encountered Jennifer Rooney on the Tongue Tie Experts podcast, the concepts that she was addressing got me diving down into a rabbit hole that has to do with airway health that is changing the way I feel about some of the struggles I have with my more sensitive child is giving me practical solutions to how I help him. And the amazing thing is it has changed how I practice with my clients. Whenever I am discussing feeding, I am now also discussing airway health because the two are so intertwined. The act of feeding a baby from your own body is one of the ways that we help babies to have proper airway health. And of course, did not stop with this first conversation. I took courses <laughs> since I first listened. I've read lots of books. And now I can't go back. So I hope that as you listen to this conversation about airway health, and about the solution that Remastered Sleep has come up with, that you too have a feeling of, oh my gosh, I was not very aware of this connection. And wow, there is something I can do about this right now with myself and my children that will lead to safer sleep, better breathing, more rest for the entire house, and more importantly, knowing that we are oxygenating our bodies properly. Enjoy. Hi, Jennifer. Welcome to the Milk Making Minutes. I'm so glad you're here. Hi, Lo. Thanks for inviting me. You okay. are Jennifer Rooney, and you represent REM Mastered, which I am so excited about. I initially heard, I think it was you on Lisa Palladino's The Tongue Tie Experts podcast. Yes, that's right. And that sent me down a whole journey of figuring out my own airway health and thinking about my children's health. She also had a dentist on, an airway health dentist that I've been diving into her material. So I am so glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So why don't you take a minute to introduce yourself sure. and REM Mastered. Okay. So again, my name is Jennifer Bruni. I am a clinically trained hygienist. I worked in private practice for 10 years, and now I've been outside of practice working on the dental side of the industry and was so fortunate to fall into REM Mastered Sleep a little over a year and a half ago and started my airway health journey. Um, it's interesting having been a hygienist as long as I have been to realize that tongue ties were a negative thing, that low tongue was a problematic thing. And actually myself having a low tongue as I've gone through this journey, learned that that was a problem for me. So I admit it, I have a low tongue and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, and using, right. Yeah. And I'm using our product, Remplenish, to actually help that along. So it's just been a tremendous journey. In fact, very transformative to the point where I never thought I would learn something as transformative about my career as I did when I started working for Rem Mastered Sleep. Yes. And the this idea that breastfeeding and airway health are so interconnected and that when we are looking to solve breastfeeding difficulties that result from improper tongue movement, it's not just about the breastfeeding, it, which is what I'm starting to really understand and try to help my private practice clients understand, is that it is about long-term airway health of their baby yeah. as well. And so some people think I can do a different feeding plan or I can 
switch from breast milk to formula, but in the end, that is not going to solve all the difficulties that could come down the line if the tongue is not moving properly. That is correct. When someone is breastfeeding, that baby's tongue is getting a workout and it's exercising and it's getting the strength to live in the roof of the mouth where it should be. But historically, especially in our American culture, what do we do when we stop breastfeeding? We start feeding our children soft, mushy foods. Mm -hmm. And that tongue is a muscle and it loses its tone. And when Mm -hmm. it loses a tone, then it can't stay up in the palate. And then we start to lose that support that ultimately leads to proper arch growth. So why do kids have crowded teeth? Why does everyone need braces? It's because their tongues are not strong and where they should be. So if we can get that tongue to stay up in the palate from the time that someone is an infant, as they continue to grow, that arch is going to grow forward and it's not going to be crowded. And that opens up the airway. Historically, looking at ancestors and many generations back, Neanderthals, they've done studies. James Nestor's written a wonderful book called Breath, where he talks about this. And if the jaws don't go forward, we have a pinched airway. So instead of breathing through like garden hoses, we are all breathing through McDonald's straws Mm. because we have not supported our tongue. And that's how our product, Replenish, is supporting that from young children on into adulthood. And we are really focused on getting this problem while kids are growing and developing while we can add them to change so that we don't have to have adults who snore in our CPAP machine in the end. Yeah, that's amazing. Sometimes when I start to go down rabbit holes like this, you learn about something like airway health, which I've never had a dentist talk to me about. And both of my children went to pediatric dentist specialists for tongue tie. One of my children had four procedures. One of my children had four tongue tie procedures, even with an ENT, and nobody spoke to me about airway health. Nobody spoke to me about how to help my children develop that tongue on the top of the mouth. And my kids are almost 10 and 6, and we did baby led weaning. So they have had more access to developing the musculature of the mouth, because it's not just about the tongue, it's also about the other muscles in the mouth as well. But when you start to learn about something like this, you think, oh, no, like, I'm so far behind. And then it's amazing to hear about a way to solve the problem or a step you can take to make progress. My kids are 14 and 17. So I was like, really? Oh, no, we're so (laughs) blind. So you're lucky that your kids are that early. But that's what I love about this podcast is we're helping inform people who have young children. They can start this at an early age and Mm -hmm. we can really get them moving. The other thing I wanted to talk about you alluded to is we don't know what we don't know. And unfortunately, there's a lot of professionals out there right now who don't even know this yet. Again, my myself. 30 years as a hygienist, just learned about it a year and a half ago. Shocking and it's sad, but you really have to search out those people who are airway focused. And that can be ENTs, lots of airway dentists, myofunctional therapists, speech language pathologists, but they have to have a focus on airway because otherwise they have not yet gotten into this conversation. And it's important that it's not mainstream yet, but this is new. This is what's happening. The conversation is starting and we got to keep getting it out there. You've heard me now for a few months talking about how much I've enjoyed getting home cooked meals delivered right to my front door from feastandfettle.com. And I'm here today to tell you that if you know somebody who is in the postpartum period, who you would like to provide true support to, that you should go to feastandfettle.com and order home-cooked meals to be delivered right to their front door. One of the biggest barriers to breastfeeding success is a lack of support. A new parent is feeding a baby up to 15 times a day. How on earth do we expect that person to feed that baby that many times, also feed themselves, and provide meals to other members of their family? There's not enough time. You know how hard it is as a busy parent yourself. 
to try to put meals on the table. Go to feastandfettle.com, use my code MILK, M-I-L-K, coordinate which meals they would like to have delivered, and send them a week's worth of delicious meals. And be the person who eases the burden for them. What a gift. I can't think of a better way to support somebody in the postpartum period. Yes, exactly. Now, we are going to talk about the product that you offer because I've been using it, my kids have been using it, and the concept really makes sense to me. I definitely want to spend some time thinking about how the nozzle works more specifically. But before we do that, you mentioned all of these people that we can seek out to try to get answers about airway health. What are some of the ways that people can know if it is someone who is going to help them with learning the proper motion in their mouth to increase their health? Because sometimes you can just get the nozzle and over a period of weeks, vast improvement. And other times, depending on your situation, you might also need to do some therapy or some dental work. And so how can somebody know that a provider they're approaching is somebody who really gets this? Understands it. I think I would just simply search airway health, either dentist or provider or ENT. Using that terminology is, I think, a first step. Uh, and then maybe tongue tie, looking for tongue tie, especially when we're talking about young children. One of the limitations of using the replenished mile nozzle is if there are severely tongue tied. In other words, if that tissue is holding the tip of the tongue down, they're going to have that surgically released before they're going to be able to use this. But it also is important about strengthening the tongue before release. But I think the key is those words, looking airway. on people's websites, doing some research, airway health or airway, airway health. dentist or mm -hmm. even dentist and snoring and obstructive sleep apnea. That's an adult problem. But if they're addressing it in adults, they'll probably be addressing it in kids. And then there's other providers out there who do things like expanders, airway orthodontics. That's another mm -hmm. one. Some orthodontists are not still in this conversation, but if they're doing airway orthodontics, they're helping the jaws go forward instead of pulling back, which has been traditionally how braces mm. have to pull the teeth back, which then makes our airway small again. Yes, exactly. Okay. All right. So what should a tongue do in the mouth? Your tongue should naturally, when you're at rest, so as you are all sitting here listening to me talk and low talk, your tongue should be lightly suctioned to the roof of your mouth. It should not be hanging low because that's going to give the strength to maintain your airway when you're awake and when you're asleep. And if your tongue is not lightly suctioned to the roof of your mouth, you tend to breathe through your mouth. And or if it's not lightly suctioned to the roof of your mouth, you will tend to breathe through your mouth, which inhibits nasal breathing. And nasal breathing is key to forming nitric oxide. And nitric oxide is antiviral, antibacterial, and antifungal. So really key in overall total immunity. So the next part of that is, is your tongue strong enough to stay lightly suctioned to the roof of the mouth? People can do that. They can hold it up there. But mm -hmm. the thing is, is, does it do it when you're not thinking about it? Mm -hmm. And when you're asleep, it's really not doing it because you're really not thinking about it. But if you have enough tone, research has shown that it can reduce the risk of snoring and vibrations and problems with airway in your sleep by as much as 50%. If someone were to go through a course of myofunctional therapy to tighten and tone that tongue so it stays suction and it doesn't fall back into the airway or doesn't vibrate when you're sleeping. Mm. Important for kids and important for adults. Yes. And so when you're using the nozzle, there are instructions that come with it. And the instructions for children are a little bit different than the instructions for adults. Yeah, they're aimed at, at parents, right? You're right. going to help your right. kids figure it out. But what's interesting is kids time can tend to pick it up and figure it out on their own, have a harder time because they yes, that's what I noticed. it too much. Uh -huh. But some of the neat features about the kids product is an, different from our adult one. There's these little tiny nubs on mm -hmm. it that help the child know where the tongue goes. And it also helps with oral desensitization. Kids have food aversions. They have problems feeding. They might gag. 
And so just by giving the tongue something to go against, that can reduce that desensitization. So that's one of the nice features about our new product, which is launching as we speak. We're officially launching in the middle of October. Yeah, that's so exciting. So when when you put your tongue at the top of your mouth, it really should be in that the same position as if you say the sound. Mm. Where the tip of the tongue ends when you say the letter N. We call that the spot. That's where mm -hmm. swallow should start. If you put your tip of the tongue there and you swallow, your the tip of the tongue should stay there and not move. And then the tongue should roll from the front to the back along the roof of the mouth. And that's the proper swallow. Not pushing your tongue forward, not pushing your tongue out of the mouth. Those are inefficient, deficient, irregular swallows that can get help by using Remplenish or through other therapies with speech language pathologists or myofunctional therapists as well. Yes. And so if that is not happening, mm -hmm. what will a parent notice either in their own mouth or in their baby or toddlers or even children's mouths throughout the day and at night if the tongue is not up there at the top of the mouth? I think the main one is they would see them breathing through their, through their mouth. When they're playing, their mouth is hanging open. When they lay to take a nap, their mouth is open. They think it looks cute, but if that mouth is open, they're breathing through their mouth. In terms of a swallow, especially with a kid or a, to a baby or a toddler, the food is going to push outside the mouth. Like when babies are first learning to eat solids, they push the food out. And when they start to get it to go in and ingest it, so if they're pushing anything forward, or if they ever see the tongue pushing forward, either the lower jaw moving forward when they're swallowing, or especially if the tongue is exiting the mouth when they're swallowing, that would be a tongue thrust. If the mouth is open, or if the teeth are open, the smile is open, that can either be from thumb sucking, or it can be from just a tongue thrusting and opening the dental arch, which is not what you want to see. The teeth don't actually close. So when mm. someone smiles, you shouldn't mm -hmm. see a space in the teeth. They would see okay. a, a gap, like mm -hmm. a an circular shape where the teeth have a hole. Okay. I don't know how to better explain that. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. And you mentioned that anterior tongue tie where the tip of the mouth, where the tip of the tongue is tethered more tightly to the bottom of the mouth through the frenulum. And everybody has a frenulum. We all have it, but some are stretchier than others. I see a lot is that pediatricians or other providers, they will notice if it's that anterior tongue tie, the one mm -hmm. that's right at the front of the mouth. But what a lot of providers miss if they have not had specialized training is the posterior tongue tie which is further back underneath the back of the tongue, which prevents the back of the tongue from lifting to the top of the palate. Yeah. Which is key. You could exercise the tongue, but if you are, have something that's holding it down in the back, a posterior tie that won't let you lift it, it's never going to get better. Mm -hmm. There again, you would see a tongue tie specialist for an evaluation, not mm -hmm. just your pediatrician, not your pediatric dentist. In some cases, a lot of pediatric dentists address this. Not your ENT, but you need to seek out someone who does tongue tie releases. Mm -hmm. And if your child is having trouble swallowing and or certainly breastfeeding, that would be a first line thing to be looking into. Yeah. And so that's either if a pediatric dentist, a good one who addresses tongue tie, they always work with an IBCLC and often a body worker as well, like a chiropractor or a craniosacral therapist. And then if your child is a toddler, or beyond the breastfeeding age, or eating solids, you and you're noticing they're having difficulty swallowing, then they would work with a feeding specialist. And that can also include a speech language pathologist. A speech who might language do pathologist too. Yeah. yeah. And do you recommend that those people also specify airway health? Or are they, is their training so specialized that often they are already, they already know about this? I'm finding a gamut of people. Some okay. have that airway health. Some have additional training in myofunctional therapy. And some haven't really, they're just focused strictly on speech. So I think it, it does beg the question that you should do a little work, a little checking, mm -hmm. get a referral from someone you know who has an understanding of airway health on who to work with in those cases. Yeah. And I know this can be really challenging. I live in a rural area where there is not a big 
number of providers to choose from to begin with. And so when you're searching for something that's so specialized and airway health studies have been around for quite a while, but it's just not quite entered the zeitgeist yet so that everybody is familiar with the term. And so then it might take some additional searching to find well, those people. The beauty, even if you live in a rural air area, in a rural area, a lot of these people are now seeing people remotely. Mm -hmm. Everything happens for a reason. There are a reason for COVID, unfortunately, but right. it, taught us how, it taught us all how to work remotely. Exactly. And so in some cases, you can get initial assessments. You can do therapies with someone on telehealth. Exactly. Yeah. And if your toddler is not capable of sitting in front of a telehealth provider, often you can work with them and then do the strengthening exercises with your toddler on your own. Yeah, and they're going right. to teach you games to play with your child so that it's fun and enjoyable and the child is not going to feel like you are in a doctor's appointment. Exactly. And then the final thing I want to bring up before we then move to what REM Mastered Sleep Solution is to bring this to both professionals who work in the field and the masses of people who just recognize that they may be having some airway difficulty is snoring. So mm -hmm. we often hear that little baby snore and we just think it's so cute. It's not supposed to be. <laughs> I know. No. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about what leads to snoring in the first place. You've talked about it, but we didn't draw the direct line between tongue function and snoring. Yeah. Ultimately, what snoring is, is a vibration of soft tissues in the back of the throat. And if snoring becomes very bad, those soft tissues actually will collapse and block the airway, and that becomes obstructive sleep apnea. But the reason things vibrate is they're weak. So if you think about if you have your bicep and you have not been exercising and your tricep maybe is a little wiggly, you're called the chicken arm, I like to call it. If you exercise your bicep and your tricep, they're going to get firmer and tighter. So they're not going to be as wiggly. So the same thing is happening in the back of the neck and the throat. If we can tighten and tone those muscles, they're not going to vibrate. And so it's the air that's passing through the mouth breathing that leads to that vibration. So it's really twofold. It's weak muscles, but then it's air passing through the mouth. So if we can get the mouth shut, number one, we're not going to be passing that air through those soft tissues that can vibrate. And then we got to strengthen those tissues so that they don't vibrate and wiggle as much. So when you hear snoring in your baby, that baby is by default sleeping with their mouth open. Essentially, we can teach our kids that noses are for breathing and mouths are for speaking and eating. Mm -hmm. And if we keep that in mind and then we keep an eye on our kids... Um, not that we have to point it out to them every time because nagging somebody to close their mouth or put their tongue on the top of their mouth isn't going to create the strength their tongues need. But to just be aware and then to know, okay, I can do something about this. So I find your product to be a really great entryway and a mm -hmm. really great starting point for anyone who is noticing this in themselves or their children. So tell me about the development of the product and the research that went into it and then what it actually does for people. So Rem Remplenish is the name of the product. So our company's Rem Mastered Sleep, but Remplenish, we're gonna Remplenish, we're gonna replenish you with water. So that's the mm -hmm. idea, the nozzle for drinking water. And it came about from our creator and founder, Anders Olmundsen. he's a biomedical engineer and he was looking for a health problem to solve. And he started this product of snoring. He went to a sleep clinic where he saw someone with very apneic events out and out said, nope, I'm not ever wearing a CPAP machine. I won't do it. This person is not breathing at night, running major health risks of heart disease, stroke, diabetes, all the complicating factors that come along from obstructive sleep apnea. Not willing to do that, even though they are technically dying every night in their sleep. And so it got him thinking, is there something that I can create that I can get people to do every day? So in doing his research, kind of due diligence, he came across a couple of interesting things. We talked about Australia already and Dr. Lim. There is the Australian didgeridoo instrument. That's that long instrument that makes that original sound. I can do mm -hmm. that pretty well. I know. That's good. I don't know if it actually works as well as the instrument play. But in this research from 2006 in Sao Paulo, 
they looked at a group of people that played that instrument 20 minutes a day, about five days a week. And over time, they had a significant reduction in their apneic events. And an apnea is a break in sleep or breathing. It's a break in breathing more than 10 seconds, multiple times in an hour. And so their apneic scores reduced. So that was clue number one, that something goes on in the mouth that helps. Further research, he looked at myofunctional therapy. I alluded to this earlier, that myofunctional therapy, exercising the muscles of the tongue, the throat, doing specific movements with a trained therapist, that can tighten and tone and that can reduce apneic events by as much as 50%. So that was clue number two. Clue number three is the most cool one. His dog, Comet, one day was playing with the peanut butter Kong, the one that you stuff peanut butter in. And mm -hmm. just watching the tongue just really work to get the peanut butter out. He literally had a brainchild moment. He said, oh my gosh, the dog is playing, but it's getting exercise. Mm. So what do people do every day? How can I get people oral exercise every day? People drink water every single day. That's really how it all came about. And that's why he created the nozzle so that people can get that exercise and proper motion of swallowing by drinking water through the nozzle. Um, when you look at it, if you look at it online, um, there's a small slit on the end and that creates resistance. In other words, it's not just a regular straw. Like I said before, you're not going to be able to suction in and get the water through it easily. You're going to have to work at it. It is exercise. And when I first started using this, like I mentioned, I had the low tongue tone. I didn't know it was a thing that it had to be in the roof of mouth. And within three days of using this, I realized that my tongue was starting to go to the roof of my mouth and starting to stay there. And what was most profound for me, being the age that I am, I used to wake up multiple times a night, have a hard time falling back to sleep because I'd be getting up to the bathroom. Actually getting up to go to the bathroom multiple times a night is not because I'm drinking too much water. It's because my sleep and my airway is breaking and it's creating an enzyme that makes me think I need to use the bathroom and I don't actually. So my sleep became more restful. I would stay asleep. If I did get up to go to the bathroom, I would be able to fall asleep easily and immediately instead of laying there and tossing and turning for an hour to an hour and a half, many nights in a mm. week. That happens very rarely now. Just me feeling more rested is key. And then with the kids now, we've got the adult product. Now we're moving down to, into the younger kids. And it's not just about snoring for kids. It's really starting that proper tongue function and tongue posture so that we can get the proper arch form. We can support that growth and development. Yes, because when people breathe through their mouths instead of their nose, they're actually getting different levels of oxygen and the brain is processing how they're breathing differently. It, the, the oxygen flows through the body differently when you're breathing through your mouth as opposed to your nose. And that's something I don't understand fully, but I know that James Nestor discusses it heavily in his book. And another book that I would recommend is The Oxygen Advantage by Patrick McEwen. Mm. So that's about over oxygenation. So when we breathe through our mouth, we're actually giving our bodies too much oxygen that's and right. not a carbon dioxide, not enough carbon dioxide. So we need that carbon dioxide level to make the body function better. So I would definitely recommend The Oxygen Advantage by um, Patrick McEwen. And oh, if you like awesome. yoga, he just wrote one for breathing for yoga too. So I haven't read that oh, one yet. <laughs> amazing. There is so, a long list of books that we could all be reading oh, in, in this every health. Yeah. And sometimes when you discover something like this, if you've never heard anything about it before, it does become quite overwhelming because you think, mm -hmm. how could so many people be using their tongues improperly? But it really is as a result of this cultural shift away from breastfeeding, away from babies eating solid foods, mm -hmm. and it has become an epigenetic change. It's not an evolutionary change to have that jaw in the back of the mouth. It's epigenetic. It only took four generations for that to truly wow. change. And James Nestor speaks about that in his book. Actually, speaking of James Nestor, I was just given a podcast that he was doing and talks all about this. I haven't had a chance to fully listen to it, but the couple of snippets that I did are profound. I'll share that so that you can um, share yeah. that with your um, listeners too as another resource. Yeah, um, I'll put that in the show notes. Yeah, that's amazing. So when somebody has sleep apnea, 
it's only qualified as sleep apnea if they have those X number of breathing breaks, 10 seconds or longer. So what's right. interesting is, so the classifications of apnea are zero to five breaks in your breathing within an hour. That's called mild. And then six to 15 is moderate. And then 16 to 30 is severe. But people can have breaks much longer than that. In fact, when my mom had her sleep test, she stopped breathing 89 times an hour. Oh, my goodness. More than 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. And what happens when you stop breathing for six seconds? or seven seconds, or eight, or nine. Mm -hmm. They don't count it, but you're still breathing. You should never be holding your breath when you're sleeping. You should be Mm -hmm. calmly, quietly breathing through your nose. And the reason that occurs, once again, is because the tongue blocks the airway. If it is not in the proper, it falls back. And if you notice your baby or your child snores, and they're always sleeping with their mouth open, that's a sign that after years and years of that, it could lead to apnea events or there might be apnea events happening. Now, we don't have crystal balls and we're not in everybody's homes and we're not doctors, so we can't diagnose your babies, but it's a sign that the tongue is not positioned on the roof of the mouth Mm -hmm. and that the mouth is open and the The child, if their mouth is open, they are breathing through their mouth and not their nose. I have another video resource that I'm going to share with you. And it's uh, there's a segment in there where there's a little boy in his car seat. The mom's a nurse and they're stopped, parked, and she's watching her little boy. He's probably 18 months sleeping and he is not breathing for many seconds long. And then he will gasp (laughs) and then he holds his breath again. And this goes on for minutes and it's just heart wrenching to watch. But those are the things that we have to observe as parents. If we see that, that's not normal. Number one, his mouth is open. And then number two, he's just plain not breathing. So I'll share that video and you can share that with the listeners as well. So tell me how the nozzle helps to solve this problem over time. And what are the results that you have seen people get? So basically, it solves this problem, helps solve the problem over time because it's strengthening that back part of the tongue. So if the tongue has the ability to lift and it's not tied, like we talked about earlier, it's going to strengthen that muscle. You're basically, I like to describe it as a tongue push-up. Every Mm -hmm. time you swallow and that tongue goes up, you are pushing up in that muscle and you're doing a push-up. And as that muscle becomes stronger, it's going to have that ability to stay positioned in the roof of the mouth when even you're not thinking about it. And that's what we're really aimed to. When your child is playing quietly on the floor, their tongue is naturally where it needs to be and their mouth isn't hanging open and they're not even aware of it. So that's what we're really aiming to do. And it does that by creating that resistance of drinking the water, having to put a little bit more effort through it, much like you do when you're breastfeeding. That Mm -hmm. takes some work. And so we're basically either trying to keep that muscle tone from being an infant into toddlerhood, into adulthood, or we're trying to regain it if it's been lost. Yes. And I know for me, I'm a snorer and I've been very concerned about my snoring and it's gotten louder and louder over the years. I don't have restful sleep. And I thought, you know what? It's not going to hurt to try it. So I got the nozzle. I started using it. I also did start using mouth tape at night to help. Mm -hmm keep my mouth closed. So I, I did both. And I immediately started to notice a difference in my quality of sleep. When I woke up, I felt so much more rested. The nights that I don't sleep with mouth tape, I don't sleep as well. And I recently had about a COVID, so I wasn't taping my mouth during that period. And now I'm just right. trying to get back to it so it can improve my restful sleep. And it it is important. In fact, speaking back to Patrick McEwen, his particular tape has an opening in the middle, which is really important for kids because that still allows them to get breath in if they are in need. And then some people are puffers. So if you're sleeping and you do this sound, Mm -hmm. you're actually still exhaling through your mouth, which we don't want. Mm -hmm. But if you completely block your mouth with tape, there's been some more recent research that can actually make sleep apnea worse. It's better to tape vertically so that if you are a puffer, you can puff out the side and not 
hold that in or use Patrick's myotape because it does have that opening in the middle. And I don't oh. get paid by Patrick to say that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good tip. Because- I did get to meet him at his home in Ireland in June. So that was very exciting. <laughs> that is exciting. That's amazing. Yes, my son is, he's a lot like me. He's not going to be convinced to do something he doesn't want to do. That's my joke. Yeah, he has strong opinions about things, but he has always had lots of disrupted sleep. He was my child who went through the multiple tongue tie procedures and that was years ago. So we didn't know as much as we know now about how to help build that tongue strength after the release. And so I really think he didn't get the full treatment that he needed to successfully build his tongue strength, even though we breastfed for three and a half years and we did baby led weaning. He's been having a really stuffy nose for a long time. And because I was doing all this reading, I realized, oh, my goodness, like when you're a mouth breather, that can lead to more congestion, more allergies allergies. So I started to notice this. I start to just mention it to him, talk to him about it. I got my nozzle and I started to use it. And then I, and he was frustrated that he kept waking frequently. And so finally I said to him, would you like to try to tackle this problem? Because you're Mm -hmm. frustrated that you keep waking up. You're frustrated with your nose congestion. And I have some ideas. And by that time, because I'd been dropping the hints over a period of a few weeks and he had been seeing me work, he hates that I snore because he hears it. He likes me to fall asleep with him and I'll fall asleep before him and immediately start snoring and then he can't fall asleep. So he saw me working on my snoring and I was able to talk to him rationally about it. And that's when he said, yes, I would like to try to tackle this. And that's when I was able to order the children's nozzle for both my son and my daughter Hello, as you were talking, two things came to mind about recognizing in our youth a problem. Does your child wet the bed? Yes. Is your child beyond mm-hmm. potty training, normal potty training stage and still having a problem? That's a key indicator of disrupted sleep. And then the other aspect I wanted to speak about is nasal hygiene. And we've not talked yet about that, but that breathing through the mouth leads through con- leads to congestion. So again, James Nestor talks about this in his book where he purposely plugged his nose and ra- breathed through his mouth and it, it raised his blood pressure, cholesterol, all kinds of health problems. And then he was super congested. And so when he finally removed that and started breathing through his nose, the congestion started to go away. But nasal hygiene is about cleaning our nasal passages, cleaning out the mucus, so that we can breathe through our nose. We should be cleaning our noses every day like we're brushing our teeth. Mm. And there are simple saline rinses. And again, I don't represent any other product but Remplenish, but I have a lot of favorites. So this one is called Clear, X-L-E-A-R. And it's by, it's a xylitol product. And it's a simple nasal spray that you spray on your nose once or twice a day. You spray, you actually blow your nose, you spray, and then you blow again a few moments later. And that will help open the nasal passages. Now, the Mm -hmm. beauty about xylitol is it's been proven to help prevent ear infections because the nose is connected to the ear. It's also helpful in preventing decay rates. Now, again, I mentioned I'm a hygienist. So we have a problem with tooth decay also. And a big part of that is because we're breathing through our mouths. So we're allowing this bad bacteria to grow because we're giving it all this oxygen and dry environment. So it's not just about keeping our brains healthy. It's about keeping our mouths healthy, keeping our ears healthy, and keeping our noses healthy, Mm -hmm. because all those little things are connected in there. So nasal hygiene is another aspect, and I invite you to try that with your son. Mm -hmm. I learned something new. Let's try this too. clear that uh, nose. So we we, we really want to be doing that every single day. Like I said, just like you're brushing your teeth every morning, you should be doing a spray on either side and you can get it easily on Amazon. Yes. Yeah. Great tip. So what ages is the nozzle recommended for children? So we are approved as an exercise device for children four to nine for our Remplenish Junior nozzle. And then of course, anyone older than that would be our adult version. And we would also say with supervision, you could have a younger child use it as well. If you have a child who's a chewer, has a chewing habit, you need mm-hmm. to supervise them because they have the ability to chew the end of this off. 
Mm. Um, not only would that be a choking risk, but they also would be damaging and destroying the nozzle. Okay, that's good to know. And for my son, for instance, because he does have some food sensitivities, some aversions to food, he tends to prefer soft food, for instance, right. instead of food that he really has to chew. You recommended that I, even though he's about to be 10, you recommended that I went with the junior nozzle because those bumps can help with that desensitization. Yes. I think in his case, that can definitely help when you've got those oral aversions. So with that, hopefully my listeners are now, they've got their minds turning like mine was when I first was introduced to this topic. And if they're thinking, you know what, I want to try this out for myself, or I want to try this out for my children or both, what can they do? Where do they go? It is available on the website to order at www.remmasteredsleep.com. So that's R-E-M-A-S-T-E-R-E-D sleep.com. And that is the Remplenish Junior for kids. That's four to nine. And then the Remplenish, just Remplenish is adults, anyone 10 and up. Yeah. And it comes in a couple of varieties. You can buy the nozzles themselves that can go on to eight to 10 millimeter rigid straws in an existing cup or water bottle. The Remplenish Junior also comes in an 18 ounce water bottle. And our adult product comes in three versions. You can get it as a nozzle alone, a nozzle straw combination, and then with plastic water. And I will also add that the very popular Stanley mugs or reduced mugs that you see with those large straws, they fit nicely on top of there. Oh, so that's so good to know. Fit nicely okay. on the mugs. Okay, great. So you can think about all the people in your life who snore and you can send them a replenish nozzle and see if it helps them to improve their sleep. And if you're noticing any of the signs that we talked about, the mouth breathing, the slight snoring, the tongue thrusting, then it might be time to consider trying to help your child. The bed wetting. Mm -hmm. The bed wetting. Yeah, that is a really maybe big thing. There's so many complicating factors that we just don't even recognize as signs of an airway problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me about airway health and about the development of the Remplenish nozzle. And I'm so glad that there are things like this that families can access to try to take control of their own health as a first step. And then once you start that, if you're not seeing improvements, then you take the next step to try to get therapy. But it's great that there is something like this that when you hear about such a difficult problem that's impacting so many people, it can be depressing. But then when you think, oh, I can do something about it, and it's really quite easy, it's as easy as drinking water, that's so fantastic. Did you know our tagline? It's as easy as drinking water. I've seen it, but I really just said that off the top of my head. So. We, we are definitely on a mission to prevent preventable airway health issues. And a lot of what we've talked about today are completely preventable, easily addressed by just working on our tongue. Exactly. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Thank you, Mel. It's been fun. In my early 20s, I was a nanny for about three years. And the father of the family I was a nanny for was a paleontologist. And I one time asked him if he could look at beautiful mountains and just see them as beautiful mountains. Or if all that he had learned about geology in his education and his professional life impacted the way he saw those beautiful mountains. And he told me that, no, he could not just see a mountain. He couldn't just look at a mountain and see a slope up, a summit, and a slope down. And that when he did look at a mountain and see all of the millions of years of forces that created that mountain, that was more beautiful than just seeing the mountain. And this is exactly how I feel about the topic of airway health. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Once you know it, you can't unknow it. And I am so glad that I was introduced to this topic and that it has allowed me to continue my learning 
and improve outcomes for my clients and their babies. And if you are the parent of a baby and you've had difficulty with breastfeeding or bottle feeding, and you are now starting to wonder if that is a sign that airway health might be impacted down the line, I would love to be the person who helps you put together some pieces of the puzzle to gather the clues for your little baby or for your nursing toddler and begin to improve outcomes both for feeding and for breathing. I can be easily reached by going to www.quabinbirthservices.com. Can't wait to help you and your family. And if you are looking to try out the nozzle for yourself or for your kids, you can just go right to the show notes. You'll find it linked there and it'll take you right to the website where you can purchase that. I have three, one for me and two for my kids, and I've really seen an impact. And finally, a reminder that if you live in Rhode Island, Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, or Maine, and you have busy weeks coming up with all the activities for yourself and your family, go to feastofbettle.com to get $30 off your first week's order of home-cooked meals delivered right to your door. Bye.